is Trisha with Insectopia, and surprise, I'm live! Um, I know that it is technically after midnight on Eastern Standard Time, but I also figure that a lot of my followers are in California, and therefore it is still October 1st for them, for just a couple of hours. And so, we're still in line. I wanted to surprise everybody, or if... It's a surprise if um, you haven't been to my last two Thursday live streams. We are going to be doing Invertober. All right, we're calling it Invertober because we're going to be doing live streams every day of the month for the entire month of October. Or at least I'm going to try my hardest to get them all done. I believe we'll be able to do every one. I might end up shooting out a message if we miss a day. But there are days that we're not going to be missing, like um, Monday nights. We're going to call them Monday meet and greets. And I'm going to be bringing live animals like my tarantulas and my scorpions. Um, and we're probably going to see the chinchillas. But that means I'm going to be on a, having a different background that day because they're not traveling to my studio down here. Um, and, you know, maybe you might meet my cats. How fun would that be? We'll see. I figured I'd let you guys vote on that because we can do different live animals or we can do the kitties. That'd be fun, too. Um, I know that a number of us study... Um, I know that a number of you... Um, go they do inktober where you do an ink drawing every day of october um and you share it and so i was thinking that we could kind of mix invertober with inktober and talk about some insects and um do pen or, or ink line drawings um, so this is something I thought would be awesome to do, and I wanted to share this graphic with you because I built it today and I thought it was so beautiful. Alright, so, um, we're gonna be doing ink line drawings, um, we're gonna be spreading more of those death head moths over the course of the month of October, um, we're gonna be meeting animals, we're still gonna be doing our microscope sketches on Thursdays and Sundays, so we're gonna be kind of mixing it up every day and Hopefully, by the end of it, we will have um, we will have made a good number more subscribers, and we will have got out there a little bit, and um, hopefully, we'll have finalized some of these sketches that I kind of have, I feel bad because I kind of left them behind and never came back to them to finish them. And so this is going to be a really nice opportunity for me to go back and look at all of the sketches and all of the things that we've accomplished in this last year and start um, kind of finalizing these sketches. Um, I might end up going through and kind of evening these lines as I move. Um, and I know that there are a number of my sketches that only have one set of legs. Um, and we might be going back in and adding the second pair of legs and talking about those insects as we're doing it. Um, but I figure because we are not looking, we don't need to spend this much space looking at that graphic this whole time. And we're not going to be using the microscope. We're just going to use the table camera. And so we're just going to... Um, you can ask me all the bug related questions that you would want um and i'm just we're just gonna hang out here and do this line sketch um i'm just gonna kind of finalize these lines in ink and erase it and see what it looks like and um you know if you have bug related questions or you want to share what you know or um uh, a time that you saw an antlion you can go ahead and share those with me Let's see. Get some light on our paper here. Very good. The other thing about ink drawing is that it takes a little bit more of my concentration than just normal pencil because you can't erase ink, so you've got to make sure that the lines are nice and straight and those types of things. 
Ink admittedly will make me a little nervous sometimes because I know that if you kind of slip, there's no real erasing it. Um, and where I would love white out to just work, um, it never looks the same. <laughs> um, I do plan on moving these line sketches. I do plan on moving these live sketches into a, um, into a coloring book, I'm hoping. And so I thought that that would be kind of fun. And if you guys got to watch and see which line drawings we ha I have... You can vote on your favorites, or let me know which ones you like the best. Alright, so we've got our antenna all done. Do some compound eyes. He's so cool. I know that also today was kind of a surprise live stream, so I don't expect too many of us to be hanging out here with me today. Um, but I really wanted to introduce both Invert-tober and, um, I wanted to both introduce Invert-tober and, um, get my first line sketch in. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change a setting on my camera so that it stops auto-focusing, because when it focuses to my hand, that's not helpful. Where is it? So hopefully our live stream is going to stay at this focus so that it doesn't move at all. Aha. Very good. Much this is going to be much better. pencil sketches um and so coming back through and adding ink makes me I already said kind of a little nervous but it's just because I already know that I like it in pencil you know but then when I finally do it in ink and then I erase the pencil generally what happens is I get all excited because it looks even better in pen. It looks, generally it's going to look even better in ink. So, um, I just have to get over those fears and do this. And you know what? Yay! Halloween is coming just around the corner, right? Halloween is this month! I mean, it's starting to feel like Halloween a little bit, and I think this weekend I'm going to be setting up my um, Halloween decorations. Look at his little leg. 
All right, so that's our fore leg. I'm moving back to our middle leg. I didn't do the hairs yet. I want to go through and do all the legs. Then I will go back in and do the hairs and the wing venations. Here's one, our middle leg, and we're going to get our hind leg all figured out. And we can see that these wings, well, a lot of times, so the wings are actually connected to the first and second segments, but they're connected kind of on the bottom side of each one of those thoracic segments. And so the first wing is actually connected right up here, and the second pair of wings is connected right about here, even though it looks like it's kind of the whole thing. Aww. He's so cute. And this first live stream is going to be pretty quick um, because I just wanted to get something out there. I wanted to introduce um, Invert Tober. I wanted to make sure that all of you knew about it. I wanted to get the first one up so that it was in the right day. Um, and then I hope to see a good number of you over the next couple of days. And we'll be able to talk about what our first meet and greet is going to be. And tomorrow is when I will have all of the, um, I'm going to have all of the events in the Josh Laws calendar. I'm going to be working on that all day tomorrow to get all of the events in. So this, um, this antlion, I remember it had a very, very unique wing shape where the tips of those wings, um, the ends of the wings were tipped and kind of curved back like this. And um, I thought that made these wings very unique and kind of beautiful. I don't remember the wing base getting so wide at the end. But that's the way I sketched it when I was looking at it under a microscope. And I'm not looking at it under a microscope at this moment. There's part of me that just wants to connect it this way. I'm going to see what it looks like in pencil. See, it just doesn't look right. Because then the wings would be too far separated, see? I'll just follow the way it says. So I got my fore wing and then my hind wing. the outlining taken care of. I want to deal some of the shading. I think I'm going to cross hatch inside of the eyes. So that they look compound. And I'm going to give some of these light hairs. Luckily, and I believe that I do remember, even the thoracic region 
this area of this antlion was super setose or super fluffy. Try to make sure that when you are, if you are going and following along and doing some of these line sketches, when you're doing insect hair, the base of the hair should be thick and the end of the hair should kind of um, get narrower. So if you want to do that on a pen, you kind of press a little harder when you start and then gradually move the pen away and that'll kind of fade the ink out. I know a lot of you are nature journalers, so I'm talking to the, um, you know, a lot of you are nature journalers, but if that, if you didn't know, that's how you do it. Um, I am going to go ahead and give these, um, wing donations and cross veins because I do believe that they are, um, helpful to the sketch, but let's see. And then all a number of these cross veins because antlions, this is a mermelionid, um, also known as an antlion, and they are considered, they're considered a net winged insect. So their wing venation is unique in that there's a lot of these long parallel lines, and then you've got a number of these little cross lines. Admittedly, it looks a little bit like a brick house when you get it right. Hey, Chaos! Everyone might just be you today, right now. It's nice to see you, though. It's nice to hear from you. Have you, um, do you have any insect stories as of late? We're coming into the end of fall, so we're closing in on the end of collection time. Yes, antlions. I'd have to agree. And I remember doing this sketch, um, this was a sketch from back in July. The, the pencil sketch was from back in July. So I'm going ahead and finalizing it in ink. And so if you haven't heard about this yet, Chaos, I plan on doing Invert-tober. We've been talking a little bit about it during the Thursday live streams. So I, uh, I decided I am going to do it. Um, which is a live stream um, every day for the month of October. Um, it should be a lot of fun. We're going to see a lot of inverts. Um, we're going to do a lot of, my guess is, ink sketches. Mondays, we're going to be doing, um, um, I'm going to call them Monday meet and greets, but they're... Um, they're going to be animals, my pets. So we're going to meet my tarantulas. We're going to meet scorpions. We're going to meet chinchillas because they're not an invertebrate, but they're fun. And I uh, want you to meet them. And then I'm going to talk to people to see if they want to meet my cats. And then we'll see if the cats want to be on camera. But for both of those, I think that that, that would be kind of fun. Your craziest insect story is you just got bit by a beetle you bought. All right, I'll bite. What type of beetle did you buy? It's time for the grand finale. We're going to erase the pencil underneath the ink and see if we got it all.
What type of beetle was it? Check that out. I wonder if you can see more of it. Yeah, you can see more of it this way. So pretty! So, Chaos, that's my graphic that I'm going to be using for, Inkvert, um, for Invertober. Um, and I threw, I, I figured I'd throw a K in there too, just because so many of, so many people are celebrating Inktober where they're drawing a new ink line sketch every day. So I figured we could do, we won't do these every day, but we might do one, we might do a couple of them. Its common name is the Devil's Coach Horse. A rove beetle. Is it a big rove beetle? The Devil's Coach Horse Beetle. So, I'm looking up to see kind of how big these beetles are. Oh. It looks like up to one and a quarter inch. So that's a decent sized rose beetle, or rove beetle. Um, and they are going to eat, um, they are going to eat carrion, and so they have chewing mouth parts. I'm actually kind of surprised, though, that you got bit by it. How did it feel? Did it hurt? What do you think? Do we do we continue and we do a Jerusalem cricket too? Cricket, you said I didn't finish that. Well, I got all the way through the ink line for my for my ant lion. So my ant lion is all done in ink. I considered doing the other side of the legs, but because I have the wings on one side and the legs on the other side, I wanted to kind of leave it. Um the Jerusalem Cricket is all still in pencil, so I can go ahead and turn it into an ink sketch. I can go back through and do all of the outlining. And it's another one of those that I didn't do the legs on. And this one, this one I kind of want the legs on. So I've been playing around, um, I've been playing around with the idea of leaving a handful of the insects without their, without one set of legs, so that when they become a coloring book, it can be kind of like a game, like draw the other legs of the insect and then color it. Did I finish the dragonfly sketch? Um, the, um, antlion. It looks really basic, but I was just wanting to go over with the line drawing. I think I like it. What do you think? Is it missing something? I 
I did go through. Um, it started off as a as a completely pencil. I went over it with pen and I erased out the pencil. And so I was thinking I was gonna leave it like this. What do you think? You said dragonfly though, and this is an antlion. Cause it has these um these hooked antenna. I wish there wasn't so much of a lag between when I record and when you guys can hear it. So you were looking at um, the dragonfly sketch that I drew a couple months ago. I have not finished that one yet either. Although, funny story is that I have something like six, um, I have something like six different uh, books of sketches. Oh look, there's the Thuriad when we drew the um when we drew the spider. The what do we call it? Huh. It had a common name that had to do with the forked tarsal claws. Something something up here. And this is an actually, um, this is actually another reason why it's gonna be good for me to do this for Invertober because I'll be able to go back through my sketches and um, collect them and get them all together. Like, hey, look, there's a tree hopper. <laughs> He's cute. And um, I did scan and um, save some of them into my computer, but most of them aren't even saved into my computer. Oh, here's my other book. So I've drawn a number of walking sticks in the last couple of weeks. Um, oh, and I drew this scorpion fly. This one, this is actually, let's see. I think I drew two scorpion flies recently. And one of them, I think it's this one, this is, I think it's this one that I like. I think that the only issue with this one is that its hind leg is longer, but I really like, um, I really like the leg and the tail on this beautiful scorpion fly. Also, the awesome mantis. I do remember drawing the mantis with you. That would be a lot of fun to go over. Oh, there's my other, there's my other scorpion fly. See, it's funny how, how your view of an insect changes. So, um, the first time I sketched it, this is how I sketched it, and I kind of have these more triangular segments on the abdomen. Um, and I think the head is a little bit different than this one is the one that I drew more recently. And I think that the, that the size of the hind leg is more realistic in this one and the shape of the tail. But I like the head better, I think, in this one. This one I love the head on. And I'm hoping that's pencil. Good. I'm like, I don't know what got on there, but it's going to come off. Okay. 
I think that the mantis is actually upstairs. I drew this, um, I sketched this walking stick recently with students, um, and I liked actually this one that I sketched with my students a little bit more than the one I sketched with you guys, because I kept it all on one piece of paper. It was a win. All right. I have to pick one and just go for it. I'm not... I believe... So I have a couple of mantids in this book, but I don't think that the mantids in this book are the ones... is the one that you were thinking of. No, that's not the one our class. What if we did this guy? This is the flower wasp, the Thaneid. Um, and I think that he has some pretty cool characteristics happening. Um, his legs are all complete on the one side. I think that this will make a really beautiful ink sketch. Don't I rest sometimes? Ha 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 ha. Um, I do every now and again rest. Um, I... Yeah, I rest. I, um, when I'm resting, I play Monster Hunter on my PlayStation, um, and I'm, uh, writing a family tree book for my family, um, and I'm spreading moths on and off camera. Yeah, I rest. I also like to be productive, so, you know, I like to keep my hands busy and my mind busy. Um, I have a handful of projects that are all in the air right now, and I think that that is something that people in my life generally do tell me or ask me, like, hey, maybe, maybe you should rest, or maybe you should slow down, but, um... I enjoy what I do, and I have fun doing it, so... I figure while I'm having fun, there's no harm in keeping going. Um, because I not only live stream, um, I not only live stream on YouTube, but I I teach on OutSchool and I teach six from like six to eight p.m. on OutSchool. So it doesn't take too much extra work to sign into to sign into YouTube for 30 minutes and chat about bugs for a couple minutes. Well, thank you, Chaos. Yeah, you work in a bakery. Oh, man. I love baked goods, though. Do you have a favorite thing to bake? I, um, there was a moment, all right, so it may or may not surprise you. I'm undiagnosed, but there's a very good possibility that my, that I have, like, an ADHD brain. I get, like, hyper-focused on projects. Um, I, I have, I get very hyper-focused on projects, and I'll switch between different projects. Um, so I actually... There was, there was a moment there that I really enjoyed decorating cakes. And, 
Um, so I was like homemaking fondant and making all the little characters, and I've got a whole bunch of frosting tools, and I played around with that. And so I still will every now and again for like special occasions um, design people cakes or um, make bug themed cakes just for funsies. Um, so that is my experience to baking. You love German breads. There are 2,000 German breads? I had no idea. Oh, that's exciting, though. Breads. I have very little experience with bread. And it's like one of those things that I eat all the time, so it would be helpful if I, like knew or did or knew how to make it or had a bread machine of some sort. Bread seems to be one of those things that kind of scares me away because it seems to have more steps um, and I generally don't have yeast in my house or like live yeast, you know, like it, I feel like it goes bad in my clot in my cupboard so then I don't buy it again. UNESCO heritage. Cool. Bread and beer. Oh, I love it. So, I don't know if you know this. I, I guess I don't know if I've mentioned it enough. Um, I grew up on a raspberry farm. So I grew up on, um, a farm. We say it was a five acre farm. It was, the property was five acres, but the raspberries were probably only about half that. Um, and so I grew up on this, we pick, you pick farm. And you mentioned jam. My mom really made, made like the best raspberry jam. Um, but my father is a fan of making both wine and cordial. And so it's not really beer, but it is on that alcohol side of things. So thinids, um, or thinids, these flower wasps, they have very thick antenna. They're, they're very wide antenna in comparison to some of the other insects. Um, that have those, like, n very narrow, thin, almost hair-like antenna. These guys, their antenna is like, we've got antenna. <laughs> Chaos, do you, are you from Germany? Are you in Germany? I've never been over, um, I've never been over the ocean. It's like, you know, one of those things I'd really like to do. Um, because as you may guess, I do really love traveling. Um, and I've been to something like 34 of the United States. Um, so 34, uh, and I, um... I'm actually pretty close to about a half a dozen states that I haven't been to yet. So they are kind of the next on my list. From India and living in Germany. That's awesome. You've really got to travel the world. You're half German by blood. So I was actually, I was just working on my family tree um, a little bit. And I'm, by heritage, um, mostly German and Irish. And um, one of my German roots is from Neustadt. And I know there's like a bunch of new stats in Germany, but this from the Hessen Castle um, state. <clears throat> so that was kind of fun to, to learn about. 
Um, I've been reading about what it was like to live in Germany in the... Um, I've been reading about what it was like to live in Germany in the 18... Um, in the 1800s, like, from 1800 to 1830s, 1832 is when, um, my family immigrated to the United States. So I was just trying to kind of figure out what it was like to live there back then and, and, you know, who was, who was ruling over their town and those types of things. It was fun. You're from Bremen! Oh, cool! So, this is fun. Um, the... My family, when they were leaving Neustadt, they, um, they left through Port Bremen in 1832 to sail to New York when they were immigrating. So they actually did have to take, like, a covered wagon back in the early 1830s to Bremen to sail to the United States. Wait a minute, Chaos. Do you ever sleep? Isn't it like five in the morning in Germany right now? Something like that? Six in the morning? By Ancestry German Immigrant Highest. By Ancestry German Immigrants are the highest, followed by British and then others. Huh! I wonder if there's a reason, is there a reason for that, that, um, the German immigrants are the highest in America? I didn't know that. I kind of figured, I kind of, I guess I figured it would, it would have been UK, like England, but... With the... Is there a, is there a reason? I mean, I could throw up guesses, but I don't think I would be, you know, correct. <clears throat> All right. So, from what I remember about my thinid, um the reason there were these double lines here wasn't because there was a separation in the segmentation, but because there was a color change. It was black and then with these thin yellow bands on its waist. And because we are not coloring my line sketches right now, um, I am going to go ahead and just draw those lines, even though we're not coloring them. And thinids are well known for having these, um, their abdomens almost look like they have rubber bands connected to them at every individual segment. And so each segment is, oh, the word I was looking for is constricted. Each segment is constricted from the last. Like this, so that it looks like there is, um, almost a rubber band holding the segments. I mean, who wouldn't want to live stream 
when I live stream, I get beautiful work done. And I get to talk to other buggy friends. Yeah, see, some of us are just like that, I guess. I figure I'll take advantage of my sleep patterns while they exist and while I can. Um, I... I haven't decided how I'm doing these zoom-ins for the ink sketches yet because I want to leave the specimen kind of clear. I might just draw the circle here. I don't know. That's undecided. We might leave it alone for now. You'll help your friends who research going all over around the world. That's fun. What is your um what is your friend research? Like what type of what type of research are you helping out with? So this is the spine that's coming up, and there are these two on the edges that kind of go down, but that's really hard to sketch here. So I'm thinking that I, th I think that that looks fine enough for a dorsal view of what this would look like, and then I'm going to come back in and do this in ink too. But I think now that we've got a lot of this body, the most of the body taken care of, I want to come back up here and get the legs taken care of. Um, I also want to crosshatch in the eyes, so let's do that first. To research a language in Java. How many languages do you speak? I assume living in Germany... You speak German. You um you type in English and you grew up How many languages do you speak? I always wish I could have um so I took I took Spanish in high school and college, but I don't think that I could really hold a really great conversation right now. Um, I probably could, um, I, I probably could, like, write a letter in Spanish, and I can definitely, like, listen in on conversations and understand what they're saying. Oh, I forgot to change these words. Um... But if I try to, if I try to speak, it takes me too long to think about what I'm going to say, and the conversation lulls too much, and it doesn't work. That's five languages! That's impressive, Chaos. We've got some cross hatching happening in the eyes. French and Italian. There you go. Seven. Enough French and Italian to have a conversation, too?
and see when I'm going back through and um, adding the pen lines to these sketches the fun thing is that if I had messed up and like it went into a word or something I'm gonna be able to fix it with the pen Previously, I accidentally added one more tarsal segment, so I took a tarsal segment away, which is why the, um, the leg shortened a little bit. to keep yourself busy too it sounds like and I do generally take Mondays off I don't have to work that day and I don't like live stream or teach any classes on Mondays so I do take Mondays off and I try to be a little bit more lazy on Mondays so that, you know, I don't burn myself out. I've had people my whole life being like, don't burn yourself out, but um, it hasn't happened yet. Okay, so... Um, you study languages and kind of the roots of the languages and where they come from and how the languages are changing, essentially. It's easier for me because I'm left-handed to pull this way so that I'm not hitting all of these. So that's why I flipped it over. There we go. Wing number one. Wing number two. Let's see. I didn't do any of these darker areas that was black because I didn't want to do any real shading. I do want to get this in. So I'm going to... I wish I had a perfect circle that would fit this so that I could follow the circle. freehand this circle. Yeah, that, and also the meaning of, of the words, how sound is produced and how brain works when we speak. Oh, that's fascinating. I actually, so this might be a linguistics topic then. Um, I was reading a paper about the study of, it was kind of like the study of both languages and how they related to colors, um, because they were looking at how different languages came up with the names of the colors at different time, like during different time periods, and then like how some civilizations have certain primary colors and how other civilizations are like they'll, their 
they uh, they use like different colors. I don't know. It was fascinating to me. Um, and you would probably know a lot more about it than I would. <laughs> and makes dictionaries. I watched a documentary and I don't remember what series, like what, um, it was on a live streaming platform. I just don't remember what it was on. And it and it might not have been a documentary. It might have just been a. Anyway, it was a it was a show that depicted the first Webster dictionary and kind of how it was created. I don't think it was a documentary. It was more of like um, inspired by true stories type of um, type of movie, but it was really interesting, and I can't imagine. Um, trying to collect all of the words in the English language and trying to make a dictionary out of them. Um, and needing to be able to prove each word with, like, where it was used and the first time it was used and all of that types of stuff. It's, um, amazing that they ever got it done. Ouch. Youch. Don't do that, Trisha. Ha! Huh. I think I found a circle that works. It goes just a little bit off the paper to match with this angle, but it was like the perfect size. See, all I had to do was think about it for a minute. We got there. All right, so I believe at this point in the sketch, we have all of the pencil covered up with our pen. We have all of the pen outlined. I didn't do this hair here at the end of the thoracic region because I don't remember how cetose it was there. And so I might end up coming back a little bit, but let's erase it and see what it looks like. This is one of my favorite parts because I feel like it really cleans up the sketch. You see the difference? Here, we're just going to erase one side. Yeah, see like the difference in the in the in the cleanliness of the lines and stuff. I just love it. Um and you know the other thing I was thinking about was because we are coming into the Halloween season and the other project I've been working on for a little bit of time, but I haven't, you know, spent enough time focusing on it to actually finish it is um, I've been creating an insect tarot deck. Um, taking the meanings um, from the tarot cards and reimagining them as insects. And it has been such a journey, and it's been super enjoyable. Um, but I have just a handful of cards left to do. I think probably less than ten. Um, so we probably could finish my tarot deck also over the course of, um, October. Oh, look at how pretty it is! Oh, it's become more of statistics. Oh, got it. It's a bunch of people arguing about how the word should be used. Fair enough. 
All right. Well, um, I had fun today, Chaos. Um, I do want to... Um, I do want to head on out because, as it turns out, it's closing in on the middle of the night and I'm uh, getting a little bit tired. We did get two um, insects line sketched and we are just, I'm just going to continue doing it. So, Chaos, feel free to join me whenever you see the notification come up and you want to chit chat about bugs or other things. Um, I'm always up for conversing. And, um, I'm gonna be here all month long, so, um, October should be fun. I'm gonna see, we're gonna see how many watch hours we can get in one month. We're gonna really push it and see what happens. People always try to put how a word should be used, but not learn how it has many meanings. That makes sense, right? Because you want to stand, you want to stand in like a non-judgmental point of view, especially a lot of times when you're doing science, right? You don't want your own personal biases in there. So you're just trying to understand how the language works and how the language has adapted over time without putting yourself in the in their shoes. Um, I like that. That makes that makes sense. Alright, so, um, thank you, Chaos, for spending, um, that's very cool. Thank you, Chaos, for spending your night with me. I'm gonna just gonna go on to, over to this closer, you know, I might, um, I might change the background. <gasps> oh, I know. Let's change the background right now. We're gonna change it not to this one. We're gonna change it... to this one. Yeah! Fireflies! Alright, so, um, we are not doing, I'm calling it Invertober, but my list has a little K in the background. I think that that'll work well because it kind of lets you know you were doing ink, but also I like that how the way Invertober sounds. Um, prescriptivism. Ugh. Yeah. No good. Well, um, thank you so much for chatting with me today, Chaos. Um, I really, I really sincerely enjoy our conversations. And so, um, whenever you have the time and availability to hang out and chit chat, I'm always, um, I'm always free. Um, we have out school classes. I teach classes to students all over the world. Um, ages 5 to 8 and 9 to 12. Um, I've been ha getting a lot more students from China recently, so they've been sharing all types of really cool, awesome big beetles with me and stuff. Um, we were recently talking about leaf insects that come in green, yellow, and red um, in southern China, so that is, was a really cool fact I learned. Um, so, out school. It's a really cool place. If you know any students um, of that age, you can send them the link that's down below, and they have tw they can have twenty dollars free um, from out school, and they can use that to pay for a class. In fact, they can pay for two classes if they're two ten dollar classes. So. Um, that's a reminder to subscribe, obviously. Um, uh, I know that the people that are here hanging out right now are already subscribed, but if you are new and spent them and have now watched this entire video, please subscribe. Um, it is super, super helpful. So the other thing is this little link down there. That's where you can send, um, you can send me a small tip. It just helps, um, to, it just helps to, um, keep Insectopia afloat as I'm going through and doing all types of education and stuff. If you're looking for me on social media and you can't find me just at Insectopia, it's because I'm at Insectopia 2015. So on Facebook and Instagram, you have to add the date 2015 to be able to find me. Yeah, I mean, and 
entomology is such a fascinating topic, and I can't tell you, um, I don't think I'm ever going to stop learning. You know, I, I learn something new about insects practically every day, and that's something that I absolutely love about them. Is like, even the students sometimes, every now and again, I'll have a student who's from somewhere else in the world, and they share with me a new species that I haven't seen before, or um, a, a fact that I, that, I, that I didn't know that, um, like, wraps around insects. It's all very cool. So these types of conversations are both helpful to me and you, right? So, oh, that's cool too, right? So, so language is just as deep. You all, you're always learning more because there are so many languages. I couldn't even imagine, but I mean, insects are a pretty large topic too. So, um, it's nice to, it's nice to wear many hats. All right. So, um, Thank you for hanging out. I am going to be signing off now. Um, maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Um, my live streams on Sunday are at 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, so that is when I will be live tomorrow. All right. Excuse me. <laughs> Have a wonderful night, Chaos. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Stay buggy.